Iron Rock Off-Roads Cherokee unibody frame stiffeners come in three sections. A front section, a center section, and a rear. Today we're going to be going over the front sections. And to begin your install, you need to get your brakes out of the way. I had anti-lock brakes on Project Overlander, and if you do, it's probably a good idea to, to pull those front anti-lock brake, the electronic cables, and get them out of the way. There's going to be a lot of heat in the welding. You don't want to damage them. They're fairly easy to remove and to reinstall. Now I'm completely removing my brake calipers. You don't necessarily need to do that. You can just get them up out of the way, but you do need to completely remove your track bar bracket. Once you remove the track bar, the next thing that needs to go is the sway bar. With the track bar and sway bar removed, if you have any aftermarket nerf bars or rock rails, depending on how they're designed, you may have to remove them as well if they interfere with this front frame stiffener. You also need to remove the fender brace and these three bolts that hold the power steering pump on. Now I'm going to remove the factory lower control arm mounts from the unibody. You may not need to do this. I'm installing a long arm kit and will not use these, so I'm cutting them out of the way. If you're going to retain your factory lower control arms or a short arm kit, then you need to leave these in place. Now removing these is by far the hardest part of the job. You will grind and grind and grind and grind and grind. And grind to get these things off the unibody. But once they're finally off, then the frame stiffener will fit nice and flush against the unibody and you're ready to start a test fit. So I just grabbed a floor jack and some quick clamps to quickly put it into place and then worked my way back with C clamps, clamping it down hard and then bending it to fit the contours of the unibody. Be patient. Once you get it fit, I took a scratch awl and traced the outline of all the places that I needed to weld so I would know where to clean up the metal with the flapper wheel. You've got to have nice clean metal for the weld to stick. So here I am now cleaning away the paint right down to the bare metal everywhere that I'm going to weld on the, the stiffener, including the underside and then we're ready to start the install. So now with all the prep complete, it's time to do the final install. So using a couple of the power steering bolts, our power steering pump bolts and a couple of floor jacks and my C-clamps, I'll get the brace indexed until I'm happy with the fitment and then it's time to start welding it up. Now Iron Rock Off-Road has cut little, little rectangles throughout the length of the brace so that you can weld it in several spots to the unibody. Speaking with Brent and their tech support, they also recommend that you fully weld the entire perimeter of the brace, that you don't just stitch weld it every two inches or so. So weld the entire perimeter. It is a lot of welding, but in the end, you end up with a tremendously reinforced frame. I was very impressed with these stiffeners. They don't just plate the outside of the unibody like a lot of the other ones on the market. These actually wrap underneath the unibody and reinforce the underside where the control arm mounts used to be, not just the outboard side of the unibody. So I was very impressed with these. The fitment was excellent. So after I was done welding, I just came back with my flapper wheel, cleaned it up, and I'm finished with the front frame stiffeners. Join me in another video. I'll show you how to install the rear and also the center sections. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll catch you in the next video.